What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, JJ Reacts, man. Hey, I'm back in another reaction video. Start the best Larry Bird comeback story ever told, man. Hey, rest in peace, Bill Walton, man. Hey, legend. Figure out to his reaction video. Hey, go say too much. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. In a 1986 regular season game versus the Atlanta Hawks, the Boston Celtics were losing by 22 points at halftime. And in the locker room, the Celtics coach, Casey Jones, gave the team what Larry Bird called one of the best speeches I've ever heard. KC Jones got on us three times really hard. And that halftime talk he gave is one of the best I've ever heard. And what happened next is why the 1986 Boston Celtics are the greatest team of all time. Because earlier in that season, on Christmas Day, the Celtics were beating the New York Knicks by 25 points in the second half. However, the Celtics ended up losing that game in one of the most embarrassing losses in Larry Bird's career. Turnover. Sparrow. The Boston Celtics are faced with the fact that they have squandered a 25-point lead. The underdog Knicks have gone wild. They were down by 25 points and they came back. And this is going to be one of the big comebacks. Damn. In many a year, Tom. The loss to New York on Christmas Day was uh, something that was embarrassing to the players, but uh, nothing really gets them down for long. And uh, you have to do that over an 82 game schedule. You can't have those lows that are going to carry on for days. And uh, you want to just keep consistent play and, and carry on. That loss demanded this team to refocus because after that game, they made a strange promise to each other that sparked one of the most dominant runs in NBA history. The team got together. Everybody said, okay, look at man, we're dedicated. We, we, we lost a Christmas game, a double overtime game to New York, played really poorly, had every chance to win that game. And afterward, everybody got together and said, man, we, we got to play better in this. And one night we were sitting around very late and having a really good time. And every night after the games, we were out together. Well, Bill liked to, after games, used to always come in the locker room and pop a beer. And, like, and we all got together and, you know, I remember Bill Walton, of course, Bill said, we're really close. We're really close to the championship here. How about we make a vow right now, right here and now amongst ourselves that nobody, nobody will take another drink until we win the championship. And everybody goes, yeah, yeah, I'll drink to that. We're, we're not going to drink until, you, <laughs> until we win the championship. <laughs> so I looked never gets so old. I looked never said, so we're planning on winning it this year. <laughs> and so, uh, so Bill said, well, of course. Good shot, bro. <laughs> Everybody quit drinking, and we all got together. And from that point on, I think we were like 60 and 10. The Celtics won 17 out of the next 18 games after that promise. But during that winning streak, they got caught off guard by a stacked Atlanta Hawks team. We're playing a game down oh, in yeah. Atlanta. Oh, yeah. This is the game right here. How long ago this was, because Atlanta was a good team. And they had Dominique. Dominique. Nigga, Dominic Wiggins, Dominic Wiggins was the fucking beast, bro. Nigga, damn near was breaking the rim, every rib. Kevin the Penguin Willis. Three to go. Willis to the baseline. Scored in a foul. Oh, Willis with a great move. Tree Rollins. Hell, bird. Turns has a shot blocked by All these guys, and we are getting hammered. We're just getting killed. Everything worked well except the shot itself. Spud Webb. That's a tough leg, bro. That's a tough leg by Spud Webb. Right now, they are blowing the Celtics away here in the first half. The question as far as Atlanta is concerned is, you know, can they sustain this emotional high for 48 minutes? This is not easy to do, even at home in front of a, uh, a sellout crowd. Pick a category in this game, and, and uh, the Celtics lost it. Yes, well, Atlanta right. won it, That's I should right. say, because this is a good old-fashioned beating up to now. You know, now they're still shooting from outside, trying to get back into it. Eddie Johnson goes coast to coast, and Atlanta leads by 23. We're down 25 at the half, and they're all trash-talking and Fans are throwing stuff at us, and they're going, we're going to kill you, Celtic Bird, hmm. Mikhail Parrish, DJ. You guys are all frauds. What are you talking about? Loose ball foul is called in the Atlanta Hawks. Now Eddie and Dennis Johnson are going after each other. Dennis jo Eddie Johnson went to throw the ball at Dennis, and uh, Tree Rollins is entering the picture, as is Randy Whitman. Atlanta, the 
they talk trash. They're Down up by there. 20 at halftime. Yeah, that was in the crowd's way. yelling and all that stuff. You used to like that, though. You used to like when the crowd got on you. When the fans were into it, or, they would, or we wasn't into it, they let us know, now it's time to battle. Wake up with delicious O's. Ads. I don't like ads, though. For fix my Hate it, bro. And Atlanta had been waiting, I guess, about a month to just get us. Uh, they were, they'd been on a roll. And uh, those that we know coming in, that they had this kind of emotion built up already. They started the first quarter off and just ran us off the, off the court. Uh, at halftime, we're down 23. It was not enough. They uh, had, had a 23-point lead at the time. But they also had to uh, verbalize. At halftime, uh, their brother Perry said, they're talking at us, they're slamming us, and then they're talking more. And uh, each time you mention a word, it seems like he got a little more angry. So we come in at halftime, we're just sulking in there, with tails between our legs. We walk in, we're sitting in the locker room, and Casey Jones, our fantastic coach, the most like John Wooden of any coach I've ever been a part of. Casey Jones got on us three times really hard. And that halftime talk he gave is one of the best I've ever heard. Casey walks in, he looks at us, looks at his watch, doesn't say a word, walks over to the cooler and pulls out a beer. Pops the beer, goes and sit down, pounds down the beer, just sitting there. Finishes the beer, looks at his watch, looks at us, goes over to the cooler and gets a second beer. Pops the beer, <laughs> pounding it down, doesn't say a word. Looks at his watch, looks around at us, goes and gets a third beer, does the same thing. And then he gets up, looks at his watch for the final time, and he says, uh, A lot of you guys have been here for a long time, but obviously you don't know what it means to be a, a Celtic. And you know, in the whole thing about having pride, you're well, wearing the jersey. And he never screamed or never yelled, and he goes, You know, we got it in us to come back and win this game, but we have to do it. We got to dictate the second half of how we want to play. But once I stepped on the parquet, he felt indebted to him to, to at least go out there and try to do something special that night and win a basketball game. Let's go. So we go out there and we're warming up for the start of the, uh, the third quarter. And they got a record sellout crowd there at the Omni. Sellout crowd on hand. It was the earliest sellout for this game in Atlanta Hawks history. And it will be the biggest crowd they've ever had. And then the team comes out in the second half, just eye of the tiger. And it was a, it's a well, great game. That's it's a the first. That's it to Bird, who had 14 in the first half and now has 16. Damn. Uh, Get into when something goes wrong, hey, bro, when Larry Bird get hot, bro, move out the way. Move out the way, bro. Cause you're not stopping him. I promise you're not stopping him. Once he got it's over with. Larry Bird started the second half by hitting 11 straight shots because he had the Mamba mentality before it even existed. Larry Bird once said, I've got a theory that if you give 100% all of the time, somehow things will work out in the end. Push yourself again and again. Don't give an inch until the final buzzer. And that's exactly what he did that night. Into the hands of Dennis Johnson. Levinson is in replacing Willis for Atlanta. Bird at the other end has Whitman on him, a much smaller man. Bird, oh, spectacular! Larry Bird! 24 points for Bird. Oh, Bird, not the... Bro, I don't think y'all understand how tough that shot is, bro. This nigga just... Bro, he's moving. <coughs> Excuse me. He's moving one leg. <laughs> how can you explain that shit, bro? That shot is not easy, bro. Low percentage shot. Meanwhile, he got nothing but net. And now Bird is smoking. He's got 12 points in this quarter and 26 in the ball game. Don't turn off that set yet, folks. You watch an NBA game, and nobody wants to ever take the ball out of bounds because they know they're never going to get it back. Larry Bird always took the ball out of bounds. The selfless sacrifice that was Larry Bird's defining personal characteristic, what he would do to make other people's dreams come true. He's gonna take the ball out of bounds, and that referee comes, and the referee hands the ball to Larry to start the third. We're down 25. 
Larry takes the ball and pushes it back into the midsection of the referee so that he can't get away. And the referee is like startled, staggered. What's going wow. on? Wow. Right there, right in front of the Celtic bench. And Larry looks right into the soul, right through the eyes of that referee. And he says to him, we're not going to quit. You make sure you don't quit either. <laughs> the guy just like melted on the spot. Larry hit 11 straight shots to start the third, including seven threes. We were tied at the end of the third. We won in overtime. We did not need a plane to get home last night. That night, Larry Bird, you're awesome. Strong comeback here in the third quarter. Ainge finds Bird. And Larry just sitting there with a straight face, knowing he that guy. That's the that's the funny part. Seen there knowing he that guy. They took their lead. Bird in the lane. 33 points for number 33. Celtics lead 198. Parrish hits Larry Bird with it. 18-footer. Boom. Larry Bird. 35 for Bird. And the Celtics have a three-point lead with 48 seconds left. And what a comeback. Down by 22 at the half. The Celtics have gone ahead by three with 48 seconds left, Goose. He intentionally misses that one. Robert Parrish gets the rebound to Larry Bird. Oh, my Again. goodness. That was just a show off. He didn't even have to do that. For the Celtics <laughs> here at the Omni in Atlanta tonight. And they're slapping high fives as they go off the floor. A marvelous overtime victory. The final score here from the Omni in Atlanta, Georgia. The Celtics 125 and the Atlanta Hawks 122. And we got out there and we ended up beating them. That was my favorite regular season win from the 86 team, which was my favorite team. Yeah. He said, yeah. Oh my God. Winner, you know, we'd win a game. Bill would come in and he'd open a beer and I was going, that was the best game I've ever been involved in. And the next night, that was the absolute best game I've ever been involved with. Oh my God. This game was the greatest comeback of Larry Bird's career, and by the end of that season, Larry Bird won the regular season MVP and the finals MVP as he led the 1996 Damn. Boston Celtics to a championship. Larry so Legend. That team is one of the greatest teams of all time. They lost on Christmas Day after having a 25-point lead. They had lost five out of nine, and then... They grouped together, won 17 out of 18, and the Celtics used Christmas Day's disaster to go on and win their 16th NBA championship. Bill, did, was there talk of you guys being the greatest team ever? Did you guys ever have that conversation? We had a great team, and we loved each other, and we loved the way we played. Yeah. We had it all. We had size, strength, power, finesse, skill, yeah. discipline, talent. <laughs> and at the end of the day, we had Red Auerbach, Casey Jones, Larry Bird, and nobody else did. So we'll take our chances anywhere, against anybody, anytime. Hey, man. Hey. That's it for our reaction, man. Like I said, once Larry Bird gets hot, move out the way. Because he's not missing. He's not missing. You might as well go play defense with somebody else or just leave him open. Because if he shoots on you, you're going to get embarrassed. If he shoots over you, you're going to get embarrassed. If he even makes it, you're going to get embarrassed. So just move. At that point, just move. Hey, man. That's it for our reaction, man. Like, comment, subscribe for your boy DG, man. Roll to 2K, make that sub button. Hey, man. Many more videos to come, man. Like I said, man, let me know in the comments what y'all want to react to, man. I got y'all. I got y'all, man. Hey, your boy JG out.